What is going on, everybody? Your McLaren Speed Shop World Champion coming at you with a different kind of style video here of how we're going to beat NL. Because NL is our hard counter, and it has been ruining my life the last uh, <laughs> the last few days. I've been putting together so many different builds and stuff to try to like to find a way to crack beating NL without giving up our overall like advantages and stuff against like Sakazuki and Purple Luffy and I've been just also playing around with different variants so yeah let me show you guys this real quick so we have the the purple red law don't pay that was like the first rough draft so don't pay attention to that one but then I've got law ace we got law ace kid we have the impel we got kid Luffy we got Marco we got straw uh, we got like a white beard variant and then we have uh, another law this is my aggro law so these are like all my law variants that I've been just testing to see like how it goes against NL and our other decks. But here to kind of shift that into something else is it doesn't matter what variant deck of law we are using against NL. All that matters is how we play NL. So what kind of clicked for me the other day and then just like watching other stuff and like learning the cards and everything is like it doesn't matter what deck or build we use we just have to play NL completely differently than we play everyone else so NL has two pivotal cards here and let me find them so the first one is Gadatsu that you want to be wary of so this I would say uh, to expect it their turn three no matter if they go first or second so Gadatsu has an on play ability that KOs to one of our characters with an equal or less than our life. So we start out the game with four. So our game plan against NL, we need to tank our life immediately down to three on turn two. So turn two, it depends on if they if they attack us, it's fine. We get down to three because then that makes all of our cards that are four cost out of their Gadatsu on play KO like range for the rest of the game which is big so if they attack us that's great if not we have Sanji here to then take a life which you could still do like even if they attack like if you get Sanji first turn and you're going second throw Sanji down and that way you have the setup because again Sanji's pretty big Sanji's like a, a critical card for our early game because turn two they're gonna attack you that'll knock you down to three which is great and then if you have Sanji out, you can then use this. And then your return, like if you're, oh, this is only applying if you're going second. Then your return fire, we're able to blast them with 7,000 and 7,000. Potentially. Or you can blast them 7,000 here, 5,000. And then depending on your hand, you can still get out. We can still put out a four. So if you're going second, you're going to have four. So... Again, it depends on what your hand is, but we have all these options. We have, you can throw down a three as well. So if you don't want to risk the double, like the double attack, and you want to have a build on, which is probably the better play, honestly. Like especially depending on who you have, I would say don't attack with seven and seven. Attack with seven, get your life down to two with Sanji. That should hit, so that'll get them down to three, and then you could swing still with Law. And then if you get them down to two on your second turn, that's insane. Because then that puts us in such a big advantage if you're able to get down to two. If not, you're still going to get them to burn something from their hand, which is still a good result. But yeah, basically, you, we want to get down to at least on our second turn down to three. Three life, because then that puts uh, the rest of our mid game safe. And then if you can get down to two, then you have no fear of Gadatsu for the rest of the mid game. Like being able, the two pivotal things that we can control, like this is like a bunch of chance and up to the cards and they have insane cards, but there's two circumstances that we can control playing against NL. And that is making sure Gadatsu can't KO and blow up our board. So if Gadatsu can't do that, we're good. And then moving into the, the end game, while you want to get down low is they're going to have this Yamato, which has the same ability but even stronger because it's both life. So it's the addition of both life. And then that's why by end game, you kind of want to be just on one life. And then we're just going to be playing 
just a rubber band kind of like defense of hopefully if you have a full board set up by turn five then you're you're sitting good because uh then we're gonna launch a bunch of attacks at them because our unfortunate situation here is we can't run any like heavy like the boss cards as they're called because we're gonna be playing so low on don and we're gonna be max probably right around seven i feel like would be the max you're probably gonna get if you're if you're playing so aggressive because we still have to maintain their character area because again we're running like no counter cards so we still need to maintain and be and push the pace on the characters so yeah basically that is kind of my stage breakdown so if i can put it down into like stages or like phases your turn one depending on what you get and depending if you go first or second it's pretty different like uh, first and second obviously if you go first we're not using sanji unfortunately like uh we're probably sanji then becomes a counter plus 2000 unless your hand like if you don't have anyone else and you have to play sanji but sanji then turns into the plus 2000 counter which is nice because we don't have any counter cards so being able to then again i've all this is situational but being being able to kind of pick your spots of the plus 2000 which is the same as otama like otama is like an early card because it's only minus 2000 so we only can get only really need to play otama like on play for a 5000 maybe a 4000 like if it's a 4000 that's like pivotal but against like nl it's not really they don't really have any i don't think but uh yeah so otama more than likely these are gonna both turn into like your mid game to end game these both turned into just a plus 2000 counter which is pretty nice because again you can use that to not only protect your life like if you even need to but more key to use to protect our characters because again we're going to be using once we get our guys out we're going to be using them to pick them down so stage one turn one i guess we can go by turns uh turns if you go second sanji is the optimal play if you have them if not it's it's fine it's not the the end all there because again it's way more important on the second turn to get down to three life so for them to attack you get down get yourself down to three life because then on your turn if you're going it doesn't matter if you're going for, first or second well I, I guess it does a little bit getting it just because of the threes but getting down getting your four guys safe from Gadatsu's range is huge because then they can't get rid of them like there's they have no other way to get rid of them and then it puts you in control of being able to pick your spots of where to attack and who to attack with and then the next phase like turn three if you can get yourself down to two life that then makes all your guys safe until the end game like Kadatsu can't take out any of your guys and then they have to attack you and then by your turn three like when they're attacking like we have like all these guys that are plus 2000 we have plus 1000s like again if you have a surplus of like kid and queen don't be afraid to like use them as the counter plus 1000 as well because uh i get at least against nl because we only need like one of them because they're they're the 6000 so depending on who you get if you can get one of them out that's great because they're both blockers so we can block uh most of their 5000 guys and just kind of be able to then draw like draw into a block like if they attack even if they attack with 6000 don't be afraid to draw into a block with one of them and then still counter out with like a plus 1000 guy if you have a surplus like that because then we can then the next turn attack so turn three get yourself down to two life and then we're weirdly sort of in in as much control of the game as we can be in once you get down to two life because then you don't have to worry about the on play abilities taking you out and then we the next phase is based on again the circumstances you're gonna have them down to two or three life already like on a turn three and now we just need to wear them down so we're gonna have the the surplus of bodies building up you're gonna want to wear them down to two and then this is where it kind of gets tricky so going into turn four again it depends on like what they got and it also depends on the the annoying triggers that they may get from their life but turn four, how I normally vis visualize the next couple turns is turn four, try to get them down to one life. And then no matter how many guys you have out, unless you have a full board and are confident you can get them down to zero, like that turn, get them down to one life, call it. 
just call it good and then you can use ideally your extra surplus of cards in your hand like if you have the counters to just keep your field alive like the two let's say you attack with two so you have two rested ideally we'll have some blockers out so we could then potentially block into block and counter as well if you even need to like uh, i would say only do that again if you have the six thousands but then you can kind of bounce into using the counters because they're going to try to get rid of their characters like if they're attacking your characters just know in their hand and stuff they probably don't have enough to be able to counter out and then that should be a sign that you have the advantage like if they're picking off our characters like going for that and you're able to then counter out and keep our characters alive that gives us a huge advantage into them burning up don and stuff like that as well so turn four it's huge i think if you can get them down to one on turn four just because on turn five you i normally say turn four get them down to one and call it just because on turn five regardless you have to expect that they're going to play either a big mom a, a katakuri or even a yamato and get another life like regardless turn five they're more than likely like they can get a life from here um let's go nakata katakuri they can play katakuri and then they'll be able to either more than likely send another one through their life or they have like or they'll have the big mom this one which then gives you the choice this one isn't as tough because again if our plan is working we can trash our own life and because we can still block out we can block out their attacks if you're managing their character area with our our power reducers here because again we have this we have this we have this and we have all of these as sort of the setup you know to, we still you still have to manage your character area you can't let them overwhelm you because we don't have the the defense ca capabilities to just go like firepower against them because they have all all of their top hitters are 8,000 so we can't compete against that we'll burn out so that's why it's crucial to kind of keep managing that the entire game but yeah just expect once you get to turn five that's why i'd say at turn four get them down to one leave it leave them at one because regardless like turn five their turn five they're they're getting another life like uh and you're gonna have to go through the same situation like even on turn four you get them down to zero turn five except expect them to get one so that's why i'd say don't attack them again because you don't want to leave too many of your guys rested and you don't want just don't want to leave the the openings for them to be able to take out more than like one guy like at max so and it's kind of pointless because then you have to go through the whole situation and it gives them more cards like if you you do that do that so turn four try to get them down to one and then turn five again expect them to get something and then you push the pace after getting rid of like whoever and then try to get them to, down to zero but again it's circumstantial turn four if you get them down to zero and you want to go through that again on like turn five feel free it's it's literally again it's tough because it's depending on how the game the flow of the game is going what you got so turn five if you can get them down to zero that's huge because then turn six you can set them up to win the game no matter who they put out like if they're going first it doesn't matter who they put out you can then on your turn six even if they put out a blocker like ideally we'll still have in our hand some sort of power reducer and like their top blockers i think is only five thousand so that puts all of them in range like no matter who you put out like even on any of our 2000s like any of our 2000 guys that puts them in range so you can get rid of any of their blockers and then you then we just have to hit them for as many attacks as we can because again they're at one life that counts as two so you're gonna get rid of their one life we get another one got to get rid of that and then you just want as many guys out as many characters out as you can to just take as many swings on them because uh Again, it still depends on the 2000. But that is my game plan breakdown of how to beat NL. And again, this is just a deck building I'm using for, for this breakdown. This is I'm not saying this is the best deck build or anything. This is just one that uh, I've been experimenting with. Because again, I have literally all of these. And that I've been just messing around with to see what kind of works against like everybody. Like all the top three with Sakazuki, NL, and Purple Luffy. But yeah, this one is pretty solid, pretty fun. It just takes a lot of managing. Like you gotta be, you gotta be thonking. So if you're into that, then this is good for you. This is a fun one. But yeah, I think that hopefully explains that. Now I'll try to jump into a game. 
so I can break down and show you like actual like the visual of everything I just explained. But yeah, I'll have the deck if you want to test out this deck, feel free. But also, also I'm saying like whatever law build you have, don't think that it's just if it's different than mine, don't think it's bad. Like if just no, you need to just uh, probably adjust like how you're playing each leader to be able to go from there. So yeah, that's uh that's the breakdown of all, all of that and yeah, Loki, I don't know, take some notes and stuff too. Like uh if that helps, write down like uh how to play if you need to. But yeah, I'll try to give you the hands-on view here of what we need to do and yeah, let's try to find a game. All right, here we go. Badland NL here. Um when we get out of this. Okay, a little bit better. A little bit better. I'm trying to think. I can throw down Gordo. He doesn't have anyone to get rid of us, right? I'm trying to... I guess we'll hold on to Goro. Or Gordo. Because we have this. And this. For our next turn. So we'll see. Alright, so they play Shura, which is fine. And I can... We'll attack just straight up. 5 on 5. Okay, we take him down to 1. You got something silly. Of course he gets that. Right off the, the bat. Are you kidding me? Man, that's annoying. Um, I might need to go <laughs> into Gordo. Well, I guess it's fine. Because if he hits us down a couple, then we can go for it. So uh, let's just stick to getting this guy out. Because even if he hits us down to two, it at least gets us out of Gadatsu range. So he's attacking us straight up. That's okay. All right, we get this for late game, which is nice. Dang, he hit the, he's got, he got the God hand. Well, that's a, a bit stinky, yeah? All right, so we got Gordo. We can get rid of this guy. He's probably pretty, the pivotal one first turn here. And then that would leave us with four. So I can summon this and Gordo. Get out these guys. And then we can kind of try to go from there. So let's see. Let's just launch the, the base attack. Alright, takes another life. Of course he gets that. Wow. <laughs> Isn't this uh, not ideal? Alrighty. Well, alrighty then. Alright, we're gonna play it, Gordo. Use his ability on this guy. Cause, uh, just because he's at 6,000 now. Because if you have two less life. So he's at 6,000, which is fine. He's still in our range. And now we can deploy these guys. Use our ability. Pound deck him, and then get out these guys, get our two back. So now we're still, we still have an okay shot. We got an okay setup. We got the cards we need. We're unfortunately not down to two life though. So he's, we're still in Gadatsu range. This will take us out of Gadatsu range. So there we go. So now he can't throw down Gadatsu, which is like okay. Um, what do we want to do here? So we can block out of it. Maybe. Or we get another card. Because if we get him down to one turn, then we can kind of go deep, or one next turn. 
All right, let's just take that. Okay, we got the 2,000. All right, so we got some defensive countermeasures here. And, of course, he's got this. And this again. Bruh, you gotta be, you gotta be kidding me in this. What a nutty hand. That's crazy. Not exactly sure what, uh, what we gotta do here. <laughs> Alright, we got another Gordo though. We can get rid of this guy again. And bring out our mans. So we have six. I can throw down Queen. If I can get him down to one, we're still okay. But I need to somehow block an insane amount of attacks though. So we'll probably need to do Queen here. And then still try to get him down to one. So let's throw Gordo down again. Scared to this guy. And then we throw Queen down. That's two blocks so that we can stop two. I try to attack this guy. Hopefully get rid of him. And then if we can hit him down to one life, we still have a shot on this turn. I think. So, hmm. <laughs> How many life does he have? Six? We have six as well. So I want to wait till you attack with him. And so let's just launch, attack with our leader on this guy. To see what he does. Okay. He does that. Which is fine. So now we can do probably attack again here. And then we have this guy to launch an attack at the end. And then we can maybe withstand. It's going to be close. It's going to be very, very close here. Um, yeah, so let's try it again. Alright, we get rid of him that time. And now we can deploy a queen. Don't want to use the card action. All right, all right, all right. So, now let's use our ability. One, two, three. Get rid of him. Bring out Zoro and try to get him down to one. I think that's the play. So let's try it. Okay. Got him down to one. There's no reason to attack him again because he can do the do the switcheroo. We have two blockers. Let's try it. Let's try it. <laughs> We're trying the best we can here. Um, no blocker. And I'll probably use our, our mans here. Do that. He's attacking again. Um, well, I could block here with queen now. Because if he gets rid of queen, it's not a big issue. We'll do that. We'll block with queen. I know he's trying to do something crazy. He's probably got, he's got eight. So I know he's trying to do something wild and wacky here. All right, five on five. Um, I think we just do this. Keep him alive. All right, Katakuri. Okay. Draw our Don. Well, that's a wee bit annoying, isn't it? I'm throwing on Katakuri, but he doesn't have... He only can have two thousands. So. So, so, so. We got, if we push the pace here, we got to attack him, what, hit him four times? We have six people? That's doable, I think. Um, unless I want to be super safe, we clear his board. We can still we can bottom deck this, clear his board completely, and then put him in a super bind here. 
that might be the move because we still have this and this. So I have four. I throw a round table down, bottom deck cut a curry. And then we attack just straight up with Zoro here. And then we can still get him down to one going into the next turn. Hmm, let me try to think about this. So I can throw the one on, on us. So I'm just gonna attack, let's see what he does. Okay. That's fine. All right, so now he has four. And we could do, I could do a seven. He gets one, one. Attack again. So I have five. I could launch five attacks here and go for it. Oh man, this is so tough. This right here is, we have the, we have the ideal setup. Or do we yeet him and then attack like one, we could attack one, one. And then we have this guy to attack as well. So we get rid of everybody. And then we still can block out. And I think... Man, I think we should do the safe route. I think we do the safe play here. Let's just try to clear the board. Okay. Attack this guy. All right, he did that, that's fine. Um, ooh. This is kinda okay. But no, I need to get, there we go. All right, all right. So here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. What do I wanna do? Because we have this, put out another blocker to be able to block. Or I can just keep it for another plus 1,000. All right, um, we'll do that. Bottom deck him. Do I wanna bring him out? Or do you wanna keep the plus 1,000? So I have him, I can block three attacks, but I don't really need uh, anybody else. Oh, that's fine. And yeah, we'll end our turn. We'll end the turny turn here. Um, honestly, I'm okay with that. We'll trash our life. All right, he's attacking us just straight up directly. Well, I can just count out of that. <clears throat> Alrighty. So here we go. We're about to smack this man. Six. <laughs> we're gonna, <laughs> we're going for it all. Um, so we probably should launch how do we want to draw this out? Because it depends what he's got up here, right? If I do a bunch of sixes, that's probably our best bet. Because even if he has sevens, he'd have to have, so he can block potentially. So we have five. We hit him twice, so that's two. So that cancels out two. And then if he has that, that's all three. So there's like, and well, he's got this. So he's got the beam, I assume, right? So let's put one on Zoro. We'll attack him. Okay, so there's that one. And now, let's just attack with Queen. Six on five. All right, takes the life, and he's going to put one back. All right. Um, So we got to hit him again. He's got two to block with, so he can block two, we take a life, and then there's that. 
So I feel like it doesn't super matter. Alright. Attack him again. Okay. Um. Well, if I throw a seven down... Then you'd have to beam, right? And then he sells two. So let's just do one. Okay, so there's the beam. There we go. All right. <laughs> had to had to super crunch the numbers there, but we did it. We okay. Beat NL. I'm pretty uh, pretty pleased with that. That was tough, though. I'm not gonna lie, but. I wanted to put out like a a play-by-play -play of what we have to do and it revolves around like he doesn't have one this is still in his deck so we don't have to worry about it but Gadatsu and Yamato there are two pivotal cards that we have to be aware of and be able to take on like uh, it's, it's a little scary Dude, that's why I have Sanji. So like early game, if he's not hitting you, that's why we have Sanji, so we can take take life in our <laughs> into our own hands, basically. So if we can get down to two, like uh, you want to right away get down to three, whether it's by Sanji or by him attacking you, because that'll immediately for the next like up until the end game, basically most of our guys will then be safe. Like all of our four costs and above are safe. And then into the end game, that's when we want to get down low and ideally have them knock down low as well. Just so, like, we can then be out of the... Oh, let me do this. Be out of their Yamato threat. Because Yamato's tough because it allows them to do both. So it's the, the total of both. So that's why we need to ideally have our stuff built up to not have them... If we have them down to one, especially by, like, turn four or five, that's great because... No matter what they do, we're like looking good. But yeah, so we can get out of their on play abilities. That's like our biggest weakness going up against NL is the their just on play effects because they have the trigger effects and the on plays that can just ruin us. And it's very tough to deal with. But that's why we have to get the numbers out. Curious, I'm thinking we probably could have won last turn as well. Like going for it, but I just wanted to be safe just in case because then we would have lost the game if uh, if we didn't and also it's just satisfying to me personally just blowing up your opponent's board like that. So yeah, things worked out okay for us and yeah, a couple little round tables in there a little the bailout safety round table and then yeah, pretty much uh, your game plan has to like evolve and develop around what you have in your hand so your early game stuff like our early game plan if Sanji's not working out Sanji then just becomes our plus 2000 counter same with Otama like early game because middle to late game they're not throwing out anybody that's going to be in the range of the 2000 so they kind of transition into our counter cards which is nice because we don't have to worry about our Don and then same it's also situational with like everybody that has a counter on it then also too, our blockers are also going to be our attackers. So our blockers you can throw down just to strike some fear. And then also just be like cognizant of like queen and kid being 6,000. So like as you saw, like they attack. But yeah, no, that was tough. I thought we were in trouble there because like they hit the double combo, the double ohm holy combo on us like twice. I was like, oh man, <laughs> that, that, that was not great. But we were able to bring it back, sticking to, uh, again, sticking to our game plan. Don't be afraid. Again, we have to get down to two life kind of as quick as possible against NL so we can, then all of our guys are safe. We get down to two, our guys are safe from their turn, what is it, three, up until like turn five-ish. Because, uh, yeah, Yamato's nine, right? So nine. So yeah, up until then. So that gives us plenty of time where we then need to be pumping out characters. We got to fill our board to set them up for the end game. Because then it doesn't matter as much if they add the life or he went big mom to try to get me to give him another life. Which is situational. Like, uh, it depends on what you have in our hand. Like, we have the counters to counter out, so that's why I took it and it was fine. 
but if you don't have that like giving them the life isn't the worst thing it just kind of lowers our chances there because then we have to hit them again like an additional attack so it just lowers like their your end shots but yeah that was great and then end game you also have to be wary that they have like all of these these guys that are like plus like multiple guys plus 2000 plus 2000 yeah plus 2000 luckily and then yeah they have the beam l thor which is the other problem with this strategy like to win we you have to give them the range of this to do plus 4000 which uh, is a little frustrating but i mean it is what it is they only can use it once so again if they have the one if they have one counter or two if they have two that means they have two of these which would be crazy but if they're leaving the one definitely be aware that they're going to have the one l4 so that's one th that's going to be a 9000 but as long as you have enough bodies out again we're just trying to swing multiple times and there's only so many plus 2000s they can have <laughs> like you can just knock them down drag them out and yeah no playing this way has definitely it's still not a sure thing like i'm i'd say win percentage wise playing like this has gotten me from maybe winning like 30 percent to maybe closer to like 40 50 percent it's still tough and it's still like it's still just dependent on again they can get some brutal life triggers like they have this big mom and they have soul pocus with soul pocus if they get it from the life activates and they don't have to pay any and also too yeah you saw katakuri and then they have like yamato going into that they have this rush nl which is tough like this rush nl is brutal because of its ability just says if the character were to be removed from the field meaning we can't bottom deck it either you can't ko or bottom deck this card or they get the option to like take their life and then get like keep him so that's like the only tough thing and like the only adjustments potentially to this deck like what i've got right now would be to bring in if you bring in rush luffy in place of like another like i don't know i've got to play around with it but that would be the only reason I'd want like the Rush Luffy in the Ace sort of setup. Like we didn't even get Ace, so it's fine. But uh, literally because if you have Luffy on the field, then you can bottom deck the the card because uh, it has the funny effect where if Luffy's on the field, then you can't can't be activated. So that'd be my only reason to mix five Don Luffy into this, just for just for that purpose. But you'd have to adjust the numbers and see how it plays with like your overall strategy and everything, and which I'll probably get around to. But yeah, because that that's a tough card to get rid of. Like, is basically this card is in, like an embodiment of this, where instead of like a, it's the same ability, but to keep this up, so where you have to attack him or try to bottom deck him twice, which obviously we only can bottom deck him once per turn so they could do that and then you still would have to attack them so that's like a double it's basically a, a blocker on top of like the other stuff so again it is situational though like if you have them down low t on life it'll be it kind of changes in the game like that's what's tough against the yellow like especially nl is just your whole plan has to be revolving around like setting them up and then going into like your end game which is like it's just a completely different way you have to play against NL than any of the other ones. Like any of the other decks, you can be pretty aggro and like we just want to want to overwhelm them. But NL, you have to like overwhelm them. But then we have to pick our spots and when to attack. And I like for me, I kind of divide it up into like stages or phases. Like the first one, is, first plan for me getting out of the range of Gadatsu, so getting down to two, and then we can then build up our guys in our mid range and then we're we're out of the threat range of any on play abilities that they're able to put out so like they can't get to yamato until the, their end game but then you just have to pick your spots to being still aggro while managing your don so it's again it's a lot of moving parts and it's not the easiest thing like at all to put together but chipping down their life and then basically the phases for me is once you get them down to maybe two you could call it end your turn and then your next turn you want to set them up get them down to one end your turn 
because uh, you don't want to waste bodies getting them down. Unless you unless you can set them up for the kill shot your following turn. Like you have to, if you get them down to one, just be wary. You have to hit him like, like he'll get the one. He puts out another card. You hit him again. He gets the one again. And then you'd have to end the turn on the zero. So that's that's the risky play. But if you're confident, then go for it. But for me, just a standard thing. Get him down to one and your turn. Kind of like what we did. Set him up the next turn. Get him down to zero if you can. And then pretty much you could go get him down to zero and go for it if you have multiple bodies. Which I would just go off and... Once you get him down to zero, if you still have guys up, like see we have the two up. Let's just... And we have them down to zero. Look what he's got. You gotta be wary of the the counter cards. If he has one, he's got the beam. So that means he's blocking one. And then you gotta be looking at their hand because they have the plus one thousand, the plus two thousand guys. So those are the thing, like all the checks that you have to go through to be able to attack, which is crazy because like in the other decks you don't really have to worry about that. But just because we don't have any like big time heavy hitters, we have to hit them. As many times as we can for like five six thousand just to kind of wear them down but hopefully this helped you guys in your struggles against NL again I'm not saying this is a sure way of beating NL like at all like this is not a sure fire shot it's still hard and I'd still say it's still it's literally dependent on if you can get all your guys out while managing the best you can to keep their numbers down and but playing this way has been, for me, definitely increased my win rate overall against NL. Like, not even close. Like, I at least feel more, way more confident. Because regardless, playing this way, you're going to get set up. And you're going to get at least a shot. And it just depends on what's in their life. If they get crazy life triggers to bring out people, then it's kind of brutal. Or, if they, like, luckily we avoided uh, them getting, like, Sanji and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, playing like this, again, first and foremost, you got to get yourself down. Minimum, like the first, uh, by turn three, you have to be down to three life. Whether you do it with Sanji, Sanji's ability, like if they don't attack you, like if they, I don't know, if people know the strat and they're playing NL, they might not attack you. That's why we need to have Sanji so we get down to three. And then, then Sanji also is nice because, uh, because Sanji's okay, because if you get him first turn, you can throw him down. Like, if you're going second, you can throw him down right away. And then that sets you up for the next turn. So depending on what they do, if they don't attack you, you can do that. But also, too, just to know, like, Sanji's ability gives you the 2,000. But then you also get the two Rest of Dawn cards. So you're at 7,000. So you can ideally smack him twice. Like, uh, going into your potential second turn if you get dot Sanji. And then you can get another body, another guy out. Because on your second turn, you're going to have four. So if you have Sanji out already, then you can play another three, four costs, depending on your hand. And then, uh, depending on your life situation and everything, you can potentially knock yourself down to two if you want to try to get them down to two. Like, you could go real early, both at two. Like, both having both people at two on turn two will benefit us. Because, again, that puts us out of the Gadatsu range of the on-play and he'd probably, like, more than likely try to get rid of Sanji because then he's going to be rested 3,000. So, probably helps you out. But we'll also have, with the four, if you have a character, four or less, you'll also have another body out. And then we just kind of can go from there. And then we can roll off our ability and potentially just get keep putting people out and just kind of overwhelm him while managing the life. But, again, that's just the game plan for me overall. And I just wanted to go in 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 depth kind of breakdown for everybody. So apologies for this one video being long, but that's kind of how my games against NL have been going. And then you just have to adjust because they're gonna play. You're gonna get hit with either this big mom with the ability. You're gonna hit with Katakuri. You're gonna get hit with at least one or two of them. So you have to then adjust your game plan strategy off in those situations, depending on if they where they put the life and stuff like that. So. But th give you like a breakdown of at least the beginning parts, which I thought was uh, would be helpful, hopefully. Because, uh, yeah, I've been trying to figure this out for the last few days, just trying different things. Because, again, I don't think your your build necessarily matters with Law. 
and I didn't want to give up too much against our other matchups. I think all that matters is like you just have to adjust your game plan strategy going into your matchups, which is a uh, again tough. Like if you're you're new to this and stuff, low key I would recommend just getting a notebook out and writing down like uh, the top the top decks like Sakazuki, Purple Luffy, NL, and like to just learn like how you need to play against them, because all three require slightly different little play styles, but that way. Too, I don't because I don't want you just to be needing to like thinking about blowing up your deck and putting into another build you know like that so that way you can kind of commit to one build and then not have to worry about changing out cards and stuff too much and just because I, I know a lot of these cards I assume are probably gonna be expensive so that way if you are interested in this you can kind of like commit to like one thing and then just know you just have to play people differently like uh, each each game is winnable, but you just have to play differently to put yourself in the outcome in the best suitable position to win it. So, yeah, I wanted to play the, put this also a, a different build variety too, so I can have the different varieties of like law builds for everybody to see. And yeah, hopefully that helped against your NL matchups. And yeah, again, this isn't a surefire way to beat NL. You're not going to beat NL like every single game, but I feel like it gets you close to do at least a 50 50 shot and then it just comes down to what's in their life and how many plus 2000s they have in the end game which for me is a lot better like even if we lost that i would have felt a lot better because we got our setup and our game plan worked and leaving up to chance for me is fine like uh, leaving it up to literally just heart of the cards whatever they get i think because it's still going to be benefit you. Like, I just won this game. Luckily, they didn't have enough to plus 2,000s and stuff like that. So, more than likely, leaving it up to chance. If you get your setup, I feel like benefits us overall. But still, just know that they can get some nutty cards that can just ruin your plans. But, yeah, thanks so much for tuning in. There's a little super in-depth breakdown in gameplay of NL. And thank you guys so much for, like, literally everything. All the, the comments and stuff. Like, helping me learn this game different things that uh, I can do as well with our triggers and stuff like that it's been super helpful for me to just like because uh, there's a lot there's just a lot you have to learn and yeah you guys have been helping me a lot with the uh, just learning all the cards and all the other decks and stuff like that that are in the game I'm still trying to learn like all the other ones like I know the top three in step five I know Sakazuki purple Luffy and NL of what to expect but there's still all the other ones that I'm still trying to learn because again, I'm still overall pretty new to this. So all the older decks that if any of you have been following like One Piece for a while are accustomed to, I'm not. So I super appreciate all the help with the, all of that stuff. But yeah, that'll do it for this one and we'll see you in the next one.